I would really have liked to have been in the room when someone pitched the idea of rotating different octopi in colored squares to score points as a video game. I mean, it doesn't make any sort of sense, but somehow the game actually came out and it's on the Wii. It's called Octomania, and you know what? It's really not that bad, especially just for a few dollars. Phew! So I wonder where this Demon King's castle is. Excuse me, miss? Gobble? You're tracking mud all over the place, Gobble. Who the heck are you? My, you're really fussy for a pig. I'm Gobble, Gobble. And I'm not a pig. I'm a goblin, Gobble. I was initially drawn to the game for two reasons. One, it was really cheap, and two, the artwork. It just really drew me in. You can see it's bright and cheery, it's not dark and moody like all the other games out there, and it's great for a puzzle game, so it kind of works. You can see it moving in the background and it looks really cool. I really have to hand it to the game. It somehow manages to offer a kind of coherent yet off-the-wall crazy storyline for every single character that you could play as. I mean, the fact that there's even a story with fleshed-out characters in a puzzle game is pretty amazing. So the game starts out when a young witch attempts to summon a treat of takoyaki, which is a Japanese dish, but instead of actually getting the octopus treat to come out, she unfortunately makes it rain octopi all over the world. So naturally, she has to use her abilities to go and stop that from happening, otherwise, I don't know, I guess the world's drowned in octopuses? With that as the focal point of the story, everyone has a really unique way for why they're going to ask this like deity being to stop this from happening. When I first started the game, I was this crab samurai, or I guess he's a Ruroni, he doesn't really have a master. But he's going about trying to, like, make a name for himself and be, you know, this really great samurai. But, you know, he's a crab, and it's just wacky and crazy and funny, but I liked it. It was really an endearing part of the story and the whole game. That being said, this is only a puzzle game where you rotate stuff. It's needlessly complicated. But if you do like stories, this one's kind of fun. And different endings for every character, so plenty of replay value. And everyone has their own motives. I mean... Honestly, I have played way worse stories in games. Gameplay-wise, Octomania is really interesting. It's kind of like Puyo Pop, but kind of not like that at all. Basically, it's a match three sort of game where you get a square that you control on the screen and you highlight the octopi as they oc occupy your spaces, rotate them into designating scoring zones, and once you get a chain of three, four, five, or six, you know, however many in that zone, they will sort of pop off the screen and you score points. And like any other puzzle game or block matching game, you don't want your screen to fill up while you can't have any other moves, and you will just want to beat your opponent. It's really unlike any other puzzle game except that Puyo Pop reference I made earlier, and it's like that because when you get bigger chains of octopi on your side of the board, you'll have other blocks drop on your opponent's side. So you can kind of do this attack-defense sort of thing. Each character has a unique special move they can use too, and you need to wait long enough for enough octopi to fill up your screen so you can actually chain together four, five, six, seven, however many special moves you need to get that to activate. But it's pretty cool. It's a neat way to add a lot more depth and strategy to the game that's otherwise very simple yet very, very addictive. Don't get me wrong, the game's not going to be replacing anything like Tetris or things like that, but it's a fair game, and the repay value is okay for this random Wii game that you might just stumble across. Uh, beyond that, the game is relatively cheap nowadays, and for a multiplayer game, you can do competitive or cooperative modes, including the story mode, so there's lots of times you can play with a friend or compete against a friend. So, what are you planning on doing with these octopi, Kari? Do with them? I guess I'll make them into takoyaki. That's impossible! To get rid of them, you must see Exaltus, the prince of the demons. If you haven't noticed already, the game features just awesomely bad voice acting. I mean, this is the stuff that people make fun of, but you really, really enjoy. I have to admit, it was one of the things that made me like the game a lot more. It makes the game way better. I mean, if it wasn't there, the game would just be way more boring. So props to all you guys, it's way better. Apparently the game is a port of an arcade game. I've never seen the arcade game. It might only be in Japan, which might make sense looking at the quality of this game and what it's kind of based on. But I would play it, it may be a cool game, and it would be kind of fun. Like, again, it's an, a puzzle game, so it's going to reach a niche audience. And if you really like this sort of aspect and enjoy puzzle games, it's something different. And it's worth your time, especially if you like those B games, cheap games, a game under $5, you know, what have you. So Octomania, not the best game I've ever played in my life, but not the worst either. It's right in the middle. And it's a game that makes buying just random games fun. I mean, it makes that whole experience worthwhile. This is the game that I never would have bought otherwise, but I'm happy I did. You know, I had a great night or two playing it, and 
I won't forget it. It's fun. You guys should check it out. Beyond that, what other game is going to let you play as a talking crab samurai? Fleeing forward. How cowardly.